Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are going to talk about an area of GPU testing that is very close to my heart, and that is power draw and efficiency. You may have seen our recent review of the new AMD RX 7900 cards, where we showed a chart that looks like this, detailing the average power draw and then also the average efficiency of both of those cards compared to a stack of other GPUs. I've always felt, however, that a single chart really doesn't do those metrics justice. And that's why about 18 months ago, I started to record power draw and efficiency figures on a per game, per resolution basis. That means if we happen to test 12 games, we have extra charts detailing exactly how much power every GPU tested will draw in that game and how that translates into performance per watt or efficiency figures. Now, if you do read our written reviews, then this data may already be familiar to you as we do include all of those charts in our launch day reviews over on kitguru.net. However, I also know that our YouTube audience is a bit different. Not all of you may go and check out the written reviews, but I still wanted to make this video to show you guys the exact power draw and efficiency values for the new RTX 40 series and RDNA 3 GPUs in a much more granular way than what we showed in our launch day videos. If you're sat there wondering exactly how we do this then, well, it's all thanks to NVIDIA's excellent PCAT tool, or the Power Capture Analysis tool. This measures power draw from three 8-pin PCIe power connectors, or from a couple of 12-volt high power connectors on the newer version, as well as power draw from the PCI slot via this riser card. Thanks to NVIDIA's FrameView benchmarking tool as well, all of that power data is logged as we benchmark our regular set of 12 games, allowing us to get power draw and efficiency results for every GPU tested over every single game at every resolution. In today's video then, the charts I'm going to show you will start off with the regular FPS graphs that you are used to seeing, but they will then transition to showing you the power draw taken by each GPU, and this is graphics card only power draw, for that benchmark run, and then we'll see how that translates into performance per watt. Make sense? Well, let's dive in. As always, we're going to kick things off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As we know, the RTX 4090 is the fastest GPU going at 1440p, though it's not miles faster than the RX 7900XTX. That RGNA3 flagship itself holds a decent 8% lead over the RTX 4080. However, it's interesting to see that both NVIDIA GPUs draw significantly less power than their RGNA3 counterparts in this game. Here, the RTX 4080 pulls just over 215 watts, compared to about 275 watts for the 4090, and that is even less than the RX 7900 XT. Of course, this has a significant knock-on effect in terms of performance per watt, both NVIDIA GPUs are well clear at the top of the chart. In fact, the RTX 4080 offers 45% more performance per watt than the RX 7900 XT, so it's nearly 1.5 times as efficient as the AMD GPU, and it's actually slightly over that figure when compared to the XTX. Up at 4K then, we're back to the FPS chart, and here the overall scaling is pretty similar. The RX 7900 XTX is 9% faster than the RTX 4080, though the 4090 is top of the chart by a 13% margin. The 7900 XT also comes in 10% slower than the RTX 4080. At 4K then, the Nvidia GPUs do draw a bit more power, though they're still well below the rated TGP. The 4090 is drawing less than 320 watts, and that's just 5 watts more than the 7900 XT. Remember how we said that the XTX is 9% faster than the RTX 4080? Well, it does that by also pulling 44% more power, averaging over 355 watts, compared to less than 250 watts power draw 
for the RTX 4080. That means the Ada Lovelace GPUs are still clearly the most efficient in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The margins are slightly reduced compared to 1440p, but the RTX 4080 is still 33% more efficient than the 7900 XTX, while the 4090 is 26% more efficient. Next up, we come to Cyberpunk 2077, starting with the frame rates at 1440p. This is a decent showing for the RX 7900 XTX, coming in 6% faster than the RTX 4080, and the 7900 XT is only 8% slower, though the RTX 4090 is clearly the fastest GPU. As for power draw though, we can already see that even at 1440p, Cyberpunk demands more power from the NVIDIA GPUs, with the 4090 hitting over 370 watts, and the 4080 came in just under 280 watts. That means the 4080 is still drawing 22% less power than the 7900 XTX, which sits at just over 355 watts. The knock-on effect for efficiency is pretty clear. Once again, the RTX 4080 is the most efficient GPU tested, offering 21% more performance per watt than either AMD GPU, with the 4090 15% more efficient than the RGNA3 cards. Up at 4K though, we do see slightly different margins, with the RX 7900 XTX now 11% faster than the RTX 4080, while the 7900 XT is only 6% slower than that NVIDIA GPU. The NVIDIA GPUs also draw more power at 4K than what we saw at 1440p, with the RTX 4080 now pulling over 400 watts, while the 4080 is basically drawing 300 watts. Both figures are still below the card's respective TGPs, with the 4080 drawing 15% less power than the 7900 XTX. We can see here that means overall efficiency of the four cards is much closer together than what we saw at 1440p, but it is still a win for the 4080, as it delivers 6% better efficiency than the 7900 XTX at 4K. The XTX is level with the RTX 4090 though, so this is definitely a much better result for AMD. Next up then is Far Cry 6, and this is actually an example I used in my day one review. At 1440p, all four of these GPUs are CPU limited, Nvidia cards slightly more so than AMD, but none of the four GPUs saw above 92% GPU utilization. The thing is though, that benefits Nvidia a heck of a lot more than it does for AMD. The RTX 40 series cards absolutely sip power when the GPU isn't being fully utilized, with the 4080 barely drawing over 200 watts, and the 4090 is just hitting over 230 watts. So it's about 220 watts below its rated 450 watt TGP. AMD cards, on the other hand, are only fractionally below their TVPs, with 303.8 watts power draw for the XT, and 341 watts for the XTX. This really is brutal for AMD in terms of efficiency, as the RTX 4080 ends up offering 36% more performance per watt than the 7900 XT, and that increases to a whopping 53% when we compare to the 7900 XTX. Even the last gen RX 6800 is more efficient than the 7900 XTX in this game, as it was still drawing over 340 watts despite being CPU limited, and this was a common occurrence across the 12 games we tested. As for Red Dead Redemption 2 though, this is the game where we saw the 7900 XTX outperform the RTX 4080 by the biggest margin, coming in 14% faster at 4K. The 7900 XT is also not even 2% slower than the RTX 4080, so you really would think this is a best case scenario for RDNA 3. This is also a game where GPU power is pushed relatively hard for the RTX 40 series cards. The RTX 4090 draws about 390 watts at 4K, with the 4080 just under 285 watts. 
These figures are still below TGP, but they are above average for these cards. The RGNA 3 GPUs though are sitting at their GBPs, with the 7900 XT drawing 312 watts compared to 356 watts for the XTX. Even then, with the strong gaming performance for AMD taken into account, as well as Nvidia's above average power draw, AMD's efficiency just isn't as good as Nvidia in Red Dead 2. Now, it's not far off, but the 4080 is actually 10% more efficient than the 7900 XTX, or 14% more efficient versus the 7900 XT. For every game like Red Dead Redemption 2, however, there are titles like Total War Warhammer 3. At 1440p, we are fully GPU bound here, even for the RTX 4090, and there's very little to split in terms of performance between the 7900 XTX and the RTX 4080. We can also see that the 7900 XT comes in 13% slower than the 4080. That's despite the 7900 XTX drawing basically the same amount of power as the RTX 4090, hovering about the 355 watt mark, while the 7900 XT is actually drawing 17% more power than the RTX 4080, despite churning out lower frame rates. As expected, the efficiency chart is hard viewing for AMD with the RTX 4080 proving to be 30% more efficient than the 7900 XTX and 33% more efficient than the 7900 XT. The RTX 4090 is also only just behind those figures. I think we'll leave it there then for the individual game benchmarks. Obviously, we could go through every single one of our charts, but this video would last for hours upon hours. If you do want to see all of that data though, be sure to check out our recent reviews over on kitguru.net. For now though, we're going to go over the average figures just to sum up what we already know. Looking first at average power draw then at 1440p, here the RTX 4090 actually draws less power than the RX 7900 XTX on average, drawing just under 335 watts compared to roughly 355 watts for the XTX. Likewise, the 4080 draws 257 watts on average, and that's 16% less power draw than the 7900 XT. Ada Lovelace then is easily the most efficient architecture at 1440p, with the 4080 offering 29% better performance per watt on average versus the 7900 XT, and the 4090 is still 17% ahead. Even at 4K, where both 40 series GPUs do consume more power relative to 1440p, NVIDIA GPUs come in well below their rated TGPs. The AMD cards, however, average their rated TBP almost perfectly, with the 7900 XTX pulling 310 watts on average compared to 356 watts on average for the XTX. Even then, we still end up with the RTX 4080 providing 16% greater efficiency than the 7900 XTX at 4K, while the RTX 4090 is 13% more efficient on average than the XTX. So that is really it for this deeper dive into the power draw and efficiency of both the Ada Lovelace and RGNA3 architectures. Of course, we did already know that the RTX 40 series GPUs are the more efficient, but hopefully this closer look has helped you to see exactly why that is the case. For me then, I'd point out a couple of things, starting with the fact that power draw and efficiency are not constant values. They really do vary quite significantly from game to game, depending on how well optimized that title is, how much CPU load there is, and so on. An overall look at average power draw will give you an idea for sure, but you really need the per game results to get the full spread of data. The other point to make is that Nvidia definitely has a massive advantage in efficiency in games where GPU utilization can't hit 100%, so where there's some CPU or other system bottleneck. Now, that's not an ideal situation to be in for any card, but considering just how fast the 40 series and RGNA3 GPUs are, it's more common than you'd think, even at 1440p. 
Whether or not AMD can improve that situation with driver updates though, or perhaps it's a hardware efficiency, we will have to wait and see. But with two new GPUs released from both AMD and Nvidia for this generation, right now it's clear to see that Team Green holds the overall efficiency advantage. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as always, I want to hear from you guys. If you appreciate this kind of more in-depth look at power draw and efficiency, let me know in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe if you haven't already. And why not come carry on the conversation with us in our Discord server, which is linked in the description below. While there, you will also find a link to our brand new merch store. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Fawkett Guru and I'll see you in the next video.